There's no shortage of Arab countries around. We have one tiny Jewish state, for heaven's sake, that belongs to the Jewish people. We are the rightful heirs. There has never been a Palestinian state here. Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, has never been a Palestinian capital. And I think we should say it the way it is. This land belongs to the Jewish people, Nekuda, which means full stop. And no amount of violence, hatred, wild mobs are going to change that reality. You can have your missiles, you can have your rockets, you can swear that you're going to destroy the Jewish state, you can scream out Allah Akbar like this Arab just does now. Daniel, thanks for joining us through this, uh, what can only be described as uh, a pretty uh, tough time in Israel at the moment there in Jerusalem. Now, as you know, the media is certainly painting a very dark picture of Israel right now. I thought we'd bring you on just so we can get to the bottom of it, the truth. What's really happening? How did this all start? Well, let's start at what's happened just a few minutes ago. Uh, there was yet another attack um, on people driving down south. Uh, two people were killed, two people seriously injured. I think we're over a thousand rockets, and I'll say that again for anyone listening to this, a thousand rockets landing in a normal, everyday, multicultural, democratic Jewish state of Israel, a thousand rockets. Now, I don't know whether you can appreciate it, but I don't think that one rocket should be accepted by any country. In fact, if one rocket fell in the middle of uh, uh, town Melbourne City on Collins Street, Australia would go to war. We saw that England went to war when Germany bombed one of the towns in England. A thousand rockets landing in Israel. The hatred. What we are seeing today is an expression of hatred against a Jewish state. We are seeing a terrorist organization that the world recognizes a terrorist organization that has basically decided to bomb indiscriminately towns, men, women and children regardless. Now, Israel is not going to sit by and worry about what the world says. In fact, Israel is doing something acting beyond the norm by, in fact, the response has been advising Hamas that we are about to bomb certain areas. The, even the precision missiles giving advance notice to these terrorists. Which country in the world would do such a thing? We saw what America did when they had one day of terrorism. We are surrounded by millions of Arabs that want to drive us into the sea and we have full rights to defend ourselves like any normal nation the world would understand. Unfortunately, we're also seeing not just coming from the Gaza Strip, but the wild hate-filled mobs of Arabs in Ramle, in Lod, has suddenly the, the hatred towards the Jewish state that they have been part of ever since 1948 is rearing its ugly head today. And that, in fact, is a little bit more worrying, a lot more worrying than what's coming out of the Gaza Strip and the hatred from there, because that's a terrorist organization, a separate entity. But these are Israeli Arabs who are living within the Jewish state. And suddenly, the destroying of synagogues, the burning of, of, of Torah scrolls, the rampaging through towns, putting fear into the Jews that are living in these mixed towns that were theoretically coexistence, that's been blown out of the water. Now, of course, it's not every single Arab, but this is an absolute nightmare. And for them to even think to blame this on the riots, uh, what was happening on the Temple Mount, is just skewing reality. You asked about the truth? The truth is that the, during Ramadan, Arabs have rioted, throwing stones, Molotov cocktails, attacking police, and police are there to keep law and order. So they shouldn't react. They shouldn't go and do what's necessary. If people went quietly to the Temple Mount to pray, I wouldn't be speaking to you. But we're not talking about peace-loving Arabs. We're talking about Arabs that have got Molotov cocktails stockpiled, rocks stockpiled, that can kill, lynching of Jews around the old city. The Israeli government and the police have to act. So yes. the media here tells us that, um, yeah, they accept that all this is happening, but it is, uh, they sort of justify it because four Palestinian families are being forcibly ejected from their houses in East Jerusalem. So wh what's the story? What's the truth here? One of the things that has taken place in the last few weeks, with uh, some of you may be familiar with, is the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. The truth is, uh, only because the press talk about it, it's known as Sheikh Jarrah. But in reality, it's Simon the Just neighborhood, Shimon Hatzadik. 
well before any Arab was living there, 150 years ago, Jews, private Jews, Ashkenazim, Sfaradim, bought land there. In fact, around the whole area where Simon the Judge, Shimon Atzadik, was buried, 2,000 years Jews have been going there. It's very clear our connection to that place. And 150 years ago, Jews bought land there. That was the reality. But the pogroms and the riots in the 30s and the 20s drove out the Jews. The 1948 war, we lost that altogether. The Jordanians take over and basically they just give the land over to Arabs to move in there. Not their land. They didn't buy it. They were just, they just moved in there. But of course, in 1967, everything changes because suddenly what was ever under the Jordanian rule and the, and the general custodian now automatically becomes under Israeli rule. Ah, but now the original owners, they can of course go back and repossess their land. At one point in time, these tenants, these illegal squatters, could have theoretically paid rent. But if they're not paying rent and they don't own the places, and the courts for the last 30 years have said that they are illegal squatters, then why shouldn't the Jews be able to repossess their homes? It's the most obvious thing that happened in every country around the world. And now this is where things get interesting. Because now the Arab world claims that the Israeli government is evicting these poor Arabs. What poor Arabs? Illegal squatters, not paying rent, don't own anything, and they're being taken out of places that were owned by Jews. And in an area where Jews bought 150 years ago, it's just phenomenal when you think about it, how the world has twisted everything, how the Arabs have twisted everything, and we're talking about Jewish ownership that are going back to their places, and they're using that as a pretext for hatred, for violence. Is that for real? Let's understand something. Hatred and violence was not started because a few Jews want their homes back in the middle of Shimon Atzadik neighborhood. That's not reality. Hatred is hatred. So it's all getting conflated here in the mainstream media. How did we go from the situation where uh, four families were getting, getting evicted for not paying rent, how did we go from that to uh, the Temple Mount riots, which then uh, spread obviously uh, to the Gaza Strip and the and the rockets we're seeing today. How did, how did that pivot like that? Today, we're not talking about the 1930s and 40s. Today, within seconds, you can have an imam that suddenly incites the masses. Why are things suddenly happening since the establishment of the State of Israel, rioting in Ramle and Lod? Because it's so easy today. The youth, the new generation uh, are going along they're attacking Jews, they're lynching Jews in the, in the streets around the Damascus Gate area. We saw how TikTok was used in order to, uh, that Arabs are spreading that. They've got the wind in the sails. I think they can get away with anything. And they're just waiting for any excuse to riot. Then other people get involved, then Hamas wants to get involved, then the PA wants to get involved because they want to, everyone wants to claim credit that they are fighting the, the Zionist entity. Um, and any excuse, will make that happen. When was the last time there were rockets coming to the Gaza Strip? A year ago, two years ago? Every few years when the stockpiles are building up and they think it's uh, pertinent to do it, they'll start up again. That's why a proper solution needs to be found. Hamas needs to be crippled totally. That area, and it's obviously not most of the people, there are two million or maybe two and a half million Arabs living in the Gaza Strip. Many of them may not even support uh, Hamas. It's a it's an entity, it's a terrorist entity recognized by Israel and the world as a terrorist entity and they should be treated as such. But to leave it the way it is and have this, uh, these attacks every few years is unacceptable and no country would ever accept it. Like I said, no country should accept and does accept one missile. And here we, you and I are talking about a thousand missiles like it's, the, like it's a weather report. No, one missile is unacceptable. One rock three being stoned at a woman. Last week, a friend of mine in the Yemenite village was walking home from synagogue after prayers, was hit in the chest while she was carrying a baby by a rock. Badly bruised, could have killed the baby. Not one rock is acceptable. Not one Molotov cocktail. And this has nothing to do with repossessing houses in the Shimon Atzadik neighborhood. This is hatred and the desire to destroy this Jewish state, but they'll never succeed. Something that they haven't internalized is that we're here and we're here to stay. And no number of missiles will drive out the strongest state, the most ethical and moral state in its homeland we won't be driven out of. So many, there's a lot of people that argue that the missiles is uh, the final uh, straw. It's come after some of the shocking images. For example, we'd seen um, Israeli police storming 
uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque during Ramadan. We've also seen a fire on the Temple Mount where it looked as if the, the mosque was burning while um, Israelis were down at the Western Wall and dancing. These were the images that shocked the world, uh, which a lot are using to justify the rockets at the moment. What would you respond to those people that are talking about those two first, si situations first, first there? Of, I don't, first of all, I don't believe that anything justifies indiscriminate firing of rockets into towns and cities into a country. Nothing justifies it. That's first of all. Second of all, the storming of the Temple Mount, you can't take that, that picture and say, oh, the Israelis are storming the Temple Mount. The Israelis go to Temple Mount because the Arabs are throwing Molotov cocktails, uh, are throwing rocks, are destroying, are looting, are lynching, and therefore there's no choice. If Arabs went during Ramadan, as we've seen sometimes in past years, and gone to the Temple Mount to pray, there wouldn't be a need for the police to storm anywhere. They're storming as a result of Arab violence and terror. And the fire on the Temple Mount, let's understand something. The fire was started because Arabs were firing these mini rockets or these huge firecrackers that can cause enormous damage from close on down onto the Kotel area, which is down beneath the Western Wall area. It didn't reach there. They themselves fired. It didn't come from Israeli fire. It came from their own fire that happened to hit a tree that was on the Temple Mount. And the dancing down below had nothing to do. They didn't even know what was going on. The reality was that the day that it was taken was Jerusalem Day. Jerusalem Day, there are tens of thousands of people at the Western Wall singing and dancing. So the, the fact that people connected the two that we were happy, Jews do not celebrate when someone else is suffering. That's not the Jewish way. When the Twin Towers fell down, I'll remind the world, I'll remind Australian viewers, when the Twin Towers went down, people in Israel were crying and saying Psalms. The Arabs in Judea and Samaria and the Gaza Strip were handing out lollies and singing. They were behind Bin Laden. Let's understand who cheer when there is death and destruction and who, uh, who sanctifies life. Very different things altogether. So if policemen have to storm the Temple Mount, have to go to the Temple Mount to keep law and order, remember, the Temple Mount is in Jerusalem. We're in charge of it. We are the sovereign body in Jerusalem and uh, there's nothing wrong with that happening. I have to tell you that a few, uh, a few years ago, there was an amazing survey done here uh, in Jerusalem uh, where 3,000 Arabs were asked, who do you prefer to be under? Sovereignty, where do you want to live? Hamas Gaza, under the PA, or under Israeli Jewish sovereignty? 63% of those who answered said they prefer to be under Jewish sovereignty. I think I that says why. it all. <laughs> Life is good. Yeah, because life is good and normal under the Jewish state. We are a loving people, a peaceful people, but we know how to react when attacked. We've been attacked by the Arab nations in 1948, in 1956, in 1967, in 1973, Intifada 1, 2, 3 and 4. The Arabs will not destroy this Jewish state. And the Arab world has to internalize that. We're here, we're here to stay. And if you don't like it, if you don't want to live in a Jewish state, if you don't swear allegiance to the Jewish state, then you're welcome to leave, to go to one of the 21 Arab countries around. In Australia, no one would accept an Australian citizen coming from somewhere else if all they wanted to do was to destroy the Australian culture, fabric, society or government. Australia would have them deported. That's what you do. So we don't need to accept the Israeli Arabs that are burning synagogues, that are looting, that are attacking Jews. We don't need to accept anything like that. On that note, Daniel, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to explain this to us. Uh, I, you know, just stay safe out there. Um, we're with you, uh, the world. The silent majority, I hope, <laughs> are with you and the people of Israel through this tough time. Thank you very much. If you learned anything from this report, make sure to pass it on. Share it with all your family and friends. Empower them with the truth so they can educate others. And if you want to have your say, head over to israelorhamas.com. Fill in the survey. Let us know. Do you think Israel has the right to defend herself? Israelorhamas.com.